G'day guys, it's uh, Nathan here from FER Contracting. Um, I just thought I'd take the opportunity uh, tonight to, um, to do a quick bit of a tabletop review and then uh, take you through some of the footage of a um, piece of gear I've recently picked up. So as most of you are probably aware, I'm a, a big fan of Pulsar equipment. Um, it's pretty much exclusively um, what I use uh, whilst I'm uh, working on various conservation programs uh, for thermal equipment. And generally speaking, I run a um, handheld unit um, and a, uh, a rifle mounted option. So um, my handheld unit previously, I've used a number of different uh, things from the accolades through to the initial axions, um, through to the core lights back in the day and, uh, and all the various options in between. But um, very recently, um, Pulsar have come up with the, um, the two series across a range of their um, different products. And one of the things they brought out was the, uh, the new axion two. So um, it's changed in designation uh, to what they now call an XG35. Uh, so I had the previous unit, uh, uh, they had a couple of different versions in that too. I had the uh, XQ38. So that was a um, middle resolution uh, sensor, you know, um, you know, as opposed to the, uh, the higher res 640 um, type units. Um, however, the, uh, the new Axion 2 that's come out, the XG35, which is what I have here um, at the moment uh, to talk about, um, is pretty exciting because it's got some pretty good specs on it uh, in comparison to some of the other models that are out there and you know just by looking at it you can uh, you can clearly see it's uh, a very portable small unit and it's quite cost effective so you know they uh, they are a good thing so just to quickly talk about the context of you know where these things are, are useful for um, being in the field so a lot of people um, really get into the um, the bigger units the accolades the mergers you know, and they're, they're more like a binocular, um, you know, great resolution, good optics, no doubt. Uh, but you need two hands to operate them. Um, and if you're operating, you know, from ATVs or side-by-sides or a quad bike or on foot or you want to have your hand held um, for scanning and you're also, also carrying a rifle and you might need to put it in a pocket quickly or, you know, things of that nature, or you just want to keep your gear relatively light, um, some of those options are a little bit big. And previously... Um, it was a little bit limited um, with the handheld um, monoculars because they, they just simply didn't have the same level, res level of resolution as some of the, uh, the bigger, better units. That's, um, that's effectively changed uh, with the XG35. So the reason I'm excited about this model and, uh, and why I've bought one um, is because they're a 640 res uh, unit, which is pretty exciting. And the magnification range is a whole bunch more useful than uh, uh, the other units have been. So a lot of the, the smaller handhelds um, historically have had higher resolution at the bottom end, so their native mag has been quite high. Uh, and that's a bit of a limitation when using a thermal spotter because thermal spotters, um, obviously you're scanning through them all of the, the time and the higher the base mag or the native mag is, the lower the field of view is on that unit. So uh, that's not uh, useful. Uh, when you're conducting uh, scanning and you're, uh, you're looking for targets in a number of different uh, scenarios. So the great thing about this unit is you get that higher level of resolution, but you also get a much better mag range. So 2.5 to 20 is where the XG35 Axion 2 sits. And 2.5 is a, uh, a good native magnification level at the bottom end for scanning. So, um, you know, good wide field of view. I don't have the exact number on hand, but it's a lot better than my XQ38 Axion was. And that was a pretty good unit, but uh, this is definitely far more usable than that in terms of mag range. And being a 640 res sensor, so having that uh, more pixels in the image, that, that better image to look at, when you dial this unit up through its magnification range, you do get a clearer image than you do on uh, the previous uh, lower resolution units. So even up on five power, resolution is really good with this and it doesn't start getting grainy till you hit around 10 power. 20, grain, uh, sorry, 20 power is a little bit grainy, but that's the same with any of the um, thermal units that are out there. As soon as you dial them up to the top end of their spec, um, obviously it gets a little bit more pixelated uh, so you don't get that same level of um, really good resolution. So that said, some of the, uh, the features of the, uh, the Axion 2, it is exactly the same as pretty much every other Pulsar unit on the market. So this particular model, it's got a 35mm um, uh, microbolometer, uh, which is the sensor. So the previous units were 38. Uh, the 35 is not a big change. Uh, I think it's been done for reasons of efficiency in production. And there's a few of the, uh, the Pulsar units that have gone to that 35mm sensor. But the actual operating system inside, and, and I'll um, cut to some footage of that a little bit later, um, is essentially the same. So 
Um, you know, it has all of the Wi-Fi functions. You can update the software. It's got all of the color palettes. Um, it, um, yeah, same uh, way to um, focus. So you've got the front focus ring, uh, which focuses for range. And you've got the rear focus ring, which focuses for your eye. So they're, uh, they're fine, uh, no change there. And then basically all of the control buttons on top. So your power button uh, up here, which obviously turns the unit on and does the uh, refreshing uh, as required. You can also put it uh, into standby mode uh, with that button. Your menu button in the middle, which has got nice little stippling on top compared to the other buttons. So you can very easily identify in the dark which button is your menu button. And obviously a short press on that button takes you through um, the, the quick options in terms of contrast, brightness, and your stadiometric rangefinder inside the unit. And then a long press takes you into the actual proper um, settings of the unit where you can change all of the other stuff. So in terms of um, the um, way you can adjust this unit inside, so all of the units have got uh, various settings and previously they've generally been described as identification mode, rock mode and forest mode. So on the new XG35 Axion 2, it's described differently. So they've just got um, uh, normal, ultra and high uh, definition in there. They do have a smoothing function in there, which wasn't uh, on the previous unit, and that just basically tidies up the image uh, as you're seeing it. One thing that I've noticed, though, that um, is quite impressive on this unit is the user mode uh, on it is really good. So. Um, you know, that ability to tune the image to the particular environment you're in uh, is, is very useful if you don't, don't want to just use the, um, the generic modes. So the previous units have all had that um, uh, user mode that uh, you can dial in as well. However, on this particular unit, for some reason, it just seems a little bit more user-friendly uh, and it does deliver a, a markedly uh, different image um, than the standard modes do. So I've found that quite good. And at, at the moment where I'm operating is in North Queensland and it's a wet season, so um, it is tough on all thermal units here at the moment. And the other unit I'm running, rifle mounted, is an XP50 Trail 2. So um, yeah, a really high res sensor as well. And both units are struggling a little bit with the humidity, but that's got nothing to do with the units. That's entirely uh, the, uh, the seasonal conditions we're experiencing at the moment. And there's no thermal unit out there that will do well in a really humid, wet environment. It's just how it is. That said, um, we have had a couple of clear nights and uh, I've been really impressed uh, with this unit. Um, we're in heavy cover uh, as well here at the moment looking for uh, feral cats, pigs uh, and things of that nature and um, the unit's been really good. So picking up birds at long range, bandicoots running around, um, you know, all sorts of things. It's, uh, it's picking up animals, uh, no problem. And again, that's no surprise. You know, these are, these are high quality units. Um, so yeah, it, um, it's a good thing. So yeah, no, no other real significant changes, probably less one factor. So on the older model uh, Axion, the initial Axions, the actual casing on the outside was more of a, um, a plastic composite material. And um, the casing on this particular model, I believe is a magnesium alloy. Now that uh, probably doesn't seem like a really significant thing, but in terms of its ability to heat sink, uh, it is. So this unit uh, at this stage stays, from what I've seen, cooler. Um, and which then means it keeps a um, clearer image because it's distributing um, the heat out of the, uh, the sensor um, better than uh, the other units have done in the past. So that's been, been a noticeable thing. Um, yeah, as you can see, you know, th these things are really handy. So you know, I'd, I'd certainly um, consider a unit of this type if you're after something a little bit more compact, but you still want that level of image quality. And the pricing uh, on these units um, is quite competitive, so the 300 bit grand, which in comparison to you know six or seven thousand dollars, or you know up to eight or nine thousand dollars, depending on what unit you're getting and where you're getting it from, uh, they're quite um, competitive. And you now, for my purposes, um, I don't need extra gear hanging off um, hanging off me on an X strap when I'm working on foot. Um, I just like something that's really portable that I can operate one handed. And if I need to change menu settings, I can do that on the fly um, with one hand. Uh, while still looking through the unit. So, you know, to me, that's a, a particularly useful feature. Anyway, what we'll, um, we'll do now, I'll just do a short video, run through the color palettes, um, do a little bit of zooming. Um, and, you know, as I said before, we're in humid North Queensland conditions at the moment. So uh, the imagery isn't gonna be fantastic, but um, yeah, don't let that get in the way. That's just uh, absolutely the conditions that we've got here at the moment. But um, yeah, just to show you uh, essentially the, uh, the other features internal uh, to the optic. 
So guys, we're uh, just looking through the unit now, and I'm looking back up the track uh, at the ATV. So I'll do this fairly quickly and cycle through the functions. But uh, this is the ultramarine colour palette. Going into the main menu now. So you can see there, that's the amplification level. So that's ultra high definition we're in. Um, and then you can cycle through um, the various modes, and you can see obviously that's changing. Uh, the definition as we do that. Color palettes, so ultramarine, violet, sepia, white hot, black hot, red hot, red monochrome, rainbow. Okay, that's the smoothing filter, uh, which is on at the moment. And that, uh, that particular thing there is a user mode, so you can turn that on and off, so that pretty much puts you in standard modes. Um, I quite like the uh, the user mode. That's the colour of the icons. Sorry, the uh, the brightness of the icons. Picture in picture. Wi-Fi settings. Then you go through. Yeah, it's uh, sorry. The previous one was Wi-Fi on. That's Wi-Fi settings. Microphone. Um, the refresh rate on the unit, which I've got set to automatic at the moment. General settings. Sorry. Let's click on that again. So yep, all that general stuff there. Pixel repair, and there you go. So that's basically cycling through it. And as you can see, obviously I'm recording at the moment, but um, you can record all the, um, you know, the same stuff you can on uh, the other units. So that's uh, that's pretty simple to to see. So the other thing I'll do, I'll just show you the um, the zoom functions uh, as they stand. So um, we're in ultramarine still, obviously. Okay, so that's on five power. That's pretty smooth for a um, you know double the native magnification. We can double up. We're on ten power there, and again, that image is still actually pretty good for how close we are to that target. And I'm just uh, zeroing at the moment. Obviously, I'm getting a little bit more shaky because of the higher mag level. And you can get right into 20 power, which I can't really see where you'd use that to be honest, but you got it there if you want it. So I'm only probably 45, 50 metres away from that, so a little bit close. But uh, yeah, then uh, then back out. So the ultramarine on, on these units is really good for that sort of scanning and picking up uh, animals. You know, I'm a, also a big fan of the, uh, the red monochrome there, and you know, I find that to be a, uh, a particularly good pellet too. Sorry. see that there. So again, really good for taking the clutter out of your image. You know, you're just scanning into fairly close country and forest there and you know, your, your heat really pops uh, in that red monochrome. So again, you know, I'll just focus that up a little bit so that's easy to see. Yeah. So, yeah, really good uh, resolution and as I said, um, in the tabletop side of things, the, um, the conditions uh, here at the moment are abysmal. It's uh, hot as, it's really wet, um, it's poor conditions for thermal. But um, yeah, uh, compared to uh, other units, this is uh, really good and it's comparable with my uh, XP50. So that's pretty amazing for the, uh, the size of the unit. That's uh, a great capability. So just a, uh, a couple of closing thoughts uh, on the unit. Um, <clears throat> they're a very good thing. They've got the magnetic caps on the front as well. I didn't mention that before. Um, you know, so these are a really handy um, unit uh, in terms of their portability, the capability they represent for the size, um, and the niche that they fill. So, as I said, they're uh, they're cost effective too in comparison to some of the bigger thermal units. One other thing I didn't mention uh, previously um, is the battery units on them. So they run a standard. Uh, APS5 uh, battery, they're relatively uh, cheap. Um, so if you run a couple of these uh, in the unit, you probably get about three to four hours of continuous running of an APS5 uh, in one of these units, which is pretty amazing, really, um, considering what you get for that. So um, in the context that I use uh, this particular unit, I pretty much run it all night um, scanning uh, as I'm working. And um, yeah, two batteries covers the whole night, no drama, so I've still got a bit of spare juice there. So obviously the unit's not on the whole time, but it's on a lot of the time. So that, uh, that's really, um, really quite good. Anyway, 
Um, I just thought I'd uh, I put this up there. So um, I'm, I'm getting a lot of questions about uh, thermal gear and you know, um, yeah, no bones about it. I'm a big fan of the Pulsar equipment and a lot of that is to do with the quality, the construction and the robust nature of it. So, you know, it's a little bit more tolerant to hard treatment than some of the other equipment on the market is. And you do pay for that uh, privilege, but um, it is what it is. You know, I'd certainly rather have something that's uh, reliable, robust and can cop a bit of water and shock um, as opposed to some of the units which may be a bit more sensitive to, to some of those factors. Anyway, um, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. I'll, uh, I'll answer where I can. Um, thanks to the guys at uh, Wolf Eyes Torches and Extra Vision Australia. Um, Extra Vision import Pulsar gear and I buy my retail stuff through Wolf Eyes. Uh, and they, uh, they always look after me. So, um, yeah, good to, uh, to deal with them. So, yeah, anyway, chuck some questions in. Thanks for watching. Um, yeah, let us know uh, any thoughts or any other content you'd like to hear around thermal or uh, other firearms-based equipment. Thanks.